Hey everyone, this is Martina Pan and welcome to my channel. I know it's been a while but in today's thrift flip video, I'm going to show you how I was able to make these colored halter tops from very large old shirts that I got from my grandfather's closet. And based on my experience, there are so many gems that you can find in your grandparents' closet. So if you haven't done that already, I suggest you do that. Anyway, without much further ado, let's begin with the flip. First things first, I ripped the seams of this shirt to separate the front and back sides and also to remove the sleeves. Um, you can just actually cut this right away but I just don't want to waste a lot of fabric that's why I ripped the seams instead. Finally, to separate the front and back sides, I cut it this way so that I can preserve the color of the shirt. After doing so, I laid this top on my fabric and cut accordingly. Um, I made a mistake of not pinning the pattern and the fabric together. That's why when I was cutting this, it felt like everything was moving around and I knew I was cutting it very badly. Um, but I was able to fix it anyway and I will show you just how I did that in this video. Anyway, it was a good thing that I was able to put some seam allowances aka allowances for mistakes. After cutting, I already have the pattern but as I tried it on, it felt like I had to crop it even higher because I just felt like it would suit the style better and so I just fixed that through the hem. For the next step, I pinned along the sides that need to be hemmed. Um, this is also where I tried to crop it to my desired length. This is also the part where I tried to fix my very bad cutting by um, working on the symmetry of this top. So what I first did is to pin one side and then I folded that in the middle and pin the other side to make them symmetrical. After doing that, I also cut excess fabrics to finally finish on the symmetry problem. After finalizing the shape of the front side, it's time to create a pattern for the back side but that's just basically a rectangular piece of fabric but it's totally dependent on your preference or on how much you want your back part to be covered. As for me, I just followed this part of the top as shown in the clip and I also didn't forget to add seam allowances for that. From the excess fabrics, I cut rectangular strips of about 2cm by 80cm that I'm going to use for the crisscross straps. So this is how I prepared my straps before I've sewn it. Um, first, I ironed them out because that would really help a lot. And then I folded in the two sides, the two edges into the center and then did another fold lengthwise. After that, I proceeded into sewing the straps. Um, it's really hard to work with very thin, very little fabric when sewing. I don't know if that's just me, but this is my preference and I want to practice on that. It's still not perfect, but this is a skill that I want to practice. And I think I already got so much better on this one by doing a lot of very, very thin straps that I prefer on my clothes. After doing the straps, I assembled the three parts of the top together. Um, just to review, the three parts include the front side, the back side, and the straps. As you can see here, the wrong sides of the front and back part of the top are facing each other. And in between those two, I inserted the straps that I made earlier, one on each side. By pinning these sides and sewing it along later on, the three parts of the top are being assembled together. So this is the part where the top starts to come to life because the three parts are already being assembled together as they are being sewn. See, this is how the top already looks like after being sewn on both sides. For the final step, I hemmed along all these pinned sides. 
relative to the next top that I'm going to show, uh, I think this top was a bit more challenging because of its uh, quite stretchable fabric. Um, nevertheless, I still made it, I know. Um, even though it's not perfect, it's really really far from perfect, but I know also that I have improved a lot on my sewing skills and I deserve a pat on the back and a good iced coffee. Um, anyway, I'm really just happy with how this top has turned out, so here are a few seconds to appreciate what I just made. This is the long way to go, ripping the seams. You can just cut it right away if you want. But for me, I really want to rip the seams off the shirt because I wanted to practice on that skill. And also, I get to save more fabric for later use. And I get to only make very minimal waste. I only waste the threads. And everything's just more neat, more organized this way. So anyway, now it's time to cut the pattern. Once again, I used the same top for my pattern and this time I did not forget to pin it to my fabric. So my cutting is a bit better or maybe a lot better also because the fabric is more stiff. But anyway, um, for this top, I cut longer than the pattern because uh, the plan is to make a V hem out of it. So I need the excess fabric. To make the V-hem, I just fold it from the sides diagonally to the center and then I just check for the symmetry by doing what I also did on the top that I've shown earlier um, and also I pinned that along for my guide. And then after finalizing the shape of the front side of the top, I then make the pattern for the back side of the top which basically is just a um, rectangular piece of fabric and I just followed, I just cut according to the shape of the front side of the top. So these are the only two patterns that I needed for this um, specific style. Um, so this one's relatively easier than the previous one that I've shown. But the challenge for me here is the V-hem because I've never done that my whole life. So this top was a practice top. For this top, I thought it would be easier to hem all the sides first before sewing the two patterns together. The fabric of this one is a lot easier to work with compared to the previous one because this is a lot more stiff but at first I made a mistake of doing a regular straight stitch because um, I had only realized later on that if I put that top on it's gonna be so hard and it may the stitches may break because the fabric is too stiff there is no room for any stretch that's why I redid the stitches and this time I chose a straight stretch stitch Oh my god, that was so hard to pronounce. Straight stretch stitch. I wasn't expecting that. That was such a tongue twister. But anyway, I'm so happy that my machine can be programmed to do stretch stitches. So this has really helped me a lot. And now for the challenging part, the V-hem. I was so afraid of this one, but I realized now as of this recording that it was just all in my head. I really just needed to be careful along this um, V-hem because I did a straight V. I did not want to stop the stitches from any ends, on any ends. So I really just needed to be careful when I reached the middle part because that's when I was going to transition and I was going to move the fabric to a different direction. And as you can see here, this video, this clip is already fast forwarded so you can just imagine how slow I was going at a normal pace. Um, anyway, I'm so happy with how this has turned out. For a starter, I think I did a pretty decent job. After all the hemming, I cut all the excess fabric just so everything will look more polished. As you can see here, it really makes a big difference. Then I pinned along the sides and sewn the two pieces of fabric together. I wasn't able to realize this while sewing but there was an excess at the back part of the top so I tried to fix that by folding in that excess fabric and making a new hem out of that.
After fixing that problem, this top is done and this has turned out to be my more favorite one in this episode. 